Hypertension is often referred to as the silent killer because you can have high blood pressures for a long time and have no symptoms even while the high blood pressures are doing damage to your body. Hi, I'm Dr. Lee Simmons, a primary care internal medicine doctor and the medical director of the Mass General Health Decision Sciences Center. And these are Mass General Brigham's answers to your most commonly searched questions on high blood pressure and hypertension. What's the difference between high blood pressure and hypertension? Well, they're very similar and they're related, but the high blood pressure is the measurement of an elevated blood pressure in the body. Hypertension is the state of chronically elevated blood pressures, and that condition needs to be monitored and treated. What counts as high blood pressure? In general, your clinician will be aiming to keep your blood pressure between 120 to 140 over 80 to 90. However, depending on your overall health and your health conditions, the target blood pressure might be lower or higher than those numbers. What do the numbers mean on blood pressure reading? So the systolic number is the blood pressure of the body when the heart is pumping, and the diastolic is a lower blood pressure reading when the heart is relaxing. So the systolic is the top number when you write it out, and the diastolic is the bottom number when it's written out. But both numbers are important to monitor and to keep in good control. What are the effects of hypertension on your heart and the rest of your body? High blood pressure on the arteries themselves will thicken the walls of those arteries and make it harder for blood to get to the small vessels of the body, down to the legs, down to your toes, up to your head, up to your brain. We need good blood flow to those parts of the body. Also, high blood pressure can weaken the walls of the arterial vessels and cause aneurysms. And over time, if those aneurysms burst, they can cause damage to the organs in the brain, in the chest, and in the abdomen. What diseases can hypertension lead to? Hypertension can cause heart disease, including heart failure and coronary artery disease, stroke, vision loss, kidney disease, and aneurysmal disease. Are there any symptoms of hypertension? Most people with hypertension don't have any symptoms of the condition. However, some symptoms of dangerously elevated blood pressures can include blurred vision, headache, chest pain, and shortness of breath. If you have any of these symptoms, that warrants an immediate evaluation by your clinicians or in the emergency room. What lifestyle changes can lower my blood pressure? There are several important changes you can make in your daily habits to lower your blood pressure reading. Adding regular physical activity that gets your heart rate up and that you can do for at least 150 minutes a week can make a big difference in lowering your blood pressure. Also, reducing the amount of salt you eat on a daily basis can make a difference as well, and I recommend not adding salt to foods as well as avoiding processed foods and eating out too often. Finally, reducing or completely eliminating alcohol can make a difference in lowering one's blood pressure. When is medication needed? If the initial measures of making lifestyle changes don't work to lower your blood pressure enough, you and your clinician will talk about medications at that point. Most patients will ultimately need two or more medications to reduce their blood pressure to the target range that for most people is between 130 to 140 systolic, that top number, 80 to 90 diastolic or the bottom number. If the addition of these medications is not effective in lowering your blood pressure to that goal range, this warrants a conversation with your clinician about changing the medications or doing other testing to figure out why your blood pressure might still be elevated. If my blood pressure goes down, can I stop taking my medication? In many cases, this is possible as long as it's in combination with lifestyle changes. I've had patients who started a walking or a running program and over time were able to stop their pills because the regular exercise was controlling their blood pressure. Other patients have stopped alcohol and they found that their blood pressure came down to a level that they didn't need to take any more pills. It's important though that if you are interested in reducing your blood pressure medications or stopping, you need to do that while talking with your clinician because some medications, if stopped abruptly, can raise the blood pressure to dangerous levels and shouldn't be stopped abruptly, but rather tapered down. Who needs to be concerned about high blood pressure? 
So we look for it in everyone, but we're especially concerned about it for patients who are older, age 50 and up, have overweight or have obesity, or have physical inactivity. But the number one risk factor for whether you will develop hypertension is going to be your family history of hypertension or high blood pressure. If you have this in your first degree family members, please inform your clinicians because you will need to be on an earlier and more rigorous monitoring program to monitor your blood pressure readings and work on preventive measures for hypertension. Click here to find more answers to the most searched health questions on Mass General Brigham's channel.